Thank you so much, Pat. It's just an absolute pleasure to be here today. And I so appreciate the partnership that we have with the chamber and with the city. You know, I'm honored to be here today with fellow leaders in the community. I have a great deal of respect for Rick and Pat as they serve the city and our business community. You know, I often share that Eden Prairie is truly a special place because of our partnership and support for each other. As a leader in the school district, I don't work alone. Uh, I have a wonderful board who is supportive and governs with vision in mind. I'd like to recognize several members who are with us today on the call or on the, the webinar. Uh, board Chair Adam Seidel is with us, Vice Chair Beth Fletcher, Board Clerk uh, Debjodi Duaviti, uh, Treasurer Aaron Casper, Director Kim Ross, and Director CJ Strail. I also need to acknowledge cabinet members who are here today. You know, they're critical to guiding this work and supporting staff across the district. We have an absolutely amazing staff. And the things that I speak about today really could not happen without the care and commitment of our staff across the districts from teachers to bus drivers to food service staff uh, to our support staff that connect with families and kids. Dr. Stacy Stanley, Associate Superintendent's on. Uh, Mr. Jason Munzberger, Executive Director of Business Services on. Mr. Tom May, Executive Director of Human Resources. Dr. Michelle Ament, Senior Director of Personalized Learning. Dr. Christina Bamboom, uh, Senior Director of Student Support Services. Dr. Sean Hoffman Bram, Senior Director of Community Education. And Brett Johnson, uh, Senior Director of Community uh, relations and communications. You know, the care they have for staff, students, and families is evident to me on a daily basis as I get to work really closely with them. And their commitment to our mission and operating with our core values at the center of their decision making is honestly inspiring to me. As we continuously focus on inspiring each student every day, this year has provided us with a lot of chances to learn and adapt and grow in partnership and to be creative. And we're going to share some of those things today. Uh, there we go. You know, beginning in March of 2020, the way things, the way we do things really changed quite rapidly and in pretty significant ways. You know, at the core, we know if students are going to learn and grow, they can't be hungry. And we couldn't do this alone. The Community Foundation partnered with us, Prop partnered with us, Sheridan Story partnered with us, and our food service staff and our transportation department stepped up working along with our partners and they delivered over 150,000 meals in last just last spring. You know, in addition to providing meals this year on site, we've delivered an additional 172,000 meals, over 172,000 meals to families to ensure that our students are well cared for um, so that they can learn and grow and thrive. Speaking of care, um, we've been providing essential child care for our first responders, frontline workers, and essential workers since June. This has helped those caring for us in our community during COVID go to work and ensure that our community is safe and healthy. The support of our community has been amazing over a long period of time. And the commitment to supporting technology has positioned us really well to be able to help navigate the pandemic and continue to support student learning during this complex time. To support learning, over 12,000 devices are in use right now. There have been nearly 7 million Schoology learning sessions um, between teachers and students over uh, the, this, this time period. And we know that it's absolutely critical that there is not a single student who's not connected. We wanna make sure everybody's connected. So technology um, delivered about 80 hotspots um, to make sure that we could connect kids who didn't have that connectivity. And just this fall alone, um, we've, we've ended up with over 60 million minutes of video conferencing that is taking place. It's quite amazing numbers. You know, as we launched distance learning rapidly in March, we also knew that care and support would be absolutely critical. So our tech team stepped up right away and they helped resolve over 2000 issues in a couple of months. 
But not only were they working on resolving issues um, with our tech devices or other things that were happening where people were struggling, they actually used those partnerships inside of our community too, because several of our ISPs or internet service providers were actually having trouble last year as well. So they actually leveraged those partnerships and relationships for students at home who were maybe having connectivity at home to make sure we could make sure that every student was connected um, to their learning during that time. It truly was a team effort. You know, but this is not just about operations and care. You know, our mission is to inspire each student to learn continuously. Instruction and commitment to kids' continuity of learning was evident in so much work that took place last spring on weekends, um, late at night and evenings, and inside of every meeting last spring. Our staff instantly turned on a dime to design distance learning opportunities that we hadn't necessarily delivered before for our students. We learned a lot in that process, um, but we did so while continuously keeping a constant focus on how do we keep connected with kids and connected to learning. Our elementary staff continue to meet with students one-on-one um, -on -one in small groups via video conferencing and partner with families in numerous different ways. Our secondary staff dove right in and focused on ensuring our students mastered standards and re redesigned learning for that new environment. It was a tremendous lift in record time for our staff and with a constant focus on learning, care, and connectedness as we all worked and learned together. That culminated in a graduation ceremony last uh, summer. And while many districts opted for virtual graduations, you know, the care of our staff and commitment to connection was realized in an in-person ceremony. And we absolutely had a beautiful day, as you can see uh, in the photos here. And I will tell you, being a part of that, the smiles on our students' faces, our staff faces, and our families was absolutely amazing as we celebrated and truly shared accomplishments uh, together that took place. You know, this care and attention resulted in 87% of our Eden Prairie families rating distance learning uh, last spring excellent or good. That's compared to 45% um, statewide. And so although last spring, it was a challenging time, you know, our partnerships, community and commitment to inspiring students was recognized by our parent. I also wanna recognize how challenging this has been for everyone. Um, but I think it shines a light on how amazing this community can be in supporting each other in those times. You know, I wanna personally uh, thank our staff for their commitment and care but so do our families and students. And so we're gonna roll a short little video here. Thank you staff and teachers for all your support. Miss you, bye. Hi, I would like to thank the entire staff for leading me to the right path and teaching me new things every day. My name is Afaniah. I am going to third grade, and when I love about In Lake is, um, people are really kind to me, and um, it's a good school. Hi, Oak Point staff. So I love the library, and I'm thankful for the library because it's a maze to know. Um, what books are the teacher going to read to you? I'm thankful for Eden Lake because it has the best teachers, staff, and students. Thank you, CMS, for everything you've done for me. And I'm thankful for having a school district that can provide teachers with enough so that they can do their job. And I'm thankful also for having teachers who are able to do that job very well. Without partnerships at home, last spring could not have been as successful as it was. And I also want to acknowledge that it was not perfect. It was tough. Um, and I want to personally just thank our families and caregivers and students. Your patience and grace and flexibility and resilience are amazing um, and part of what makes Eden Prairie a great community as well. Let's shift gears to 2020-21. There was careful intentional planning with great care to think about what we learned last spring, how to meet students' needs, and to design around learning and connections. 
there was thought and expertise and care to design healthy and safe environments for our, our students and staff during an incredibly complex and unprecedented time, staff stepped up. And I cannot express enough gratitude for our bus drivers, teachers, food service staff, support staff, clerical staff and administrators, all other district staff that have been involved. They have all stretched themselves in amazing ways, but maintained a focus on meeting this, the needs of each of our students uh, in a caring and connected way um, as we, we launched an unprecedented school year. While many districts struggled to launch, we were able to begin the school year with great success and care because our talented staff, thoughtful design and commitment to students. Students began um, the year in a couple of different models. Our kindergarten and first grade students started in person five days a week, all of them together. Our second through 12th grade started in a hybrid model. EP Online was also launched and became our largest elementary school pretty much overnight. Uh, Synchronous and connected experiences were designed so that we were ready to be able to pivot while maintaining connections and care. We've learned a lot and adapted a lot this year. You know, we found a lot of new ways of doing things and some of those strategies will be forever with us and embedded in our future work. This has been a time of challenge, but also an incredible time of growth for us across the district. Last summer, our students, um, our student support services, operations teams, and health and safety teams jumped right into action and are honestly second to none. The designs and protocols they put in place have worked. Um, we've been able to maintain a safe and healthy work and learning environment throughout this school year. And it's allowed us to have more students in school for more time than almost all of our counterparts. That did not happen by chance or luck. Uh, it truly has been about layered mitigation strategies. After preparing um, during the summer, uh, we've implemented and continue to evolve those layered mitigation strategies to keep our students, staff, and staff safe and healthy. And to do that was a huge feat. You know, here's a few numbers of some of the things that happened. You know, over 10,000 student masks were handed out. You know, we ensured that we had reusable masks for our staff. And so each staff has plenty of reusable masks that they have available to them um, as needed. We had over 12,000 face shields delivered. Um, we had over 275 plexiglass barriers distributed. Um, our custodial teams and our workers put down over 4,000 social distancing marks around floors um, to be able to set us up. And we had over 600 social distancing signs displayed to be able to start training um, and teaching. We had additional um, mitigation layers in terms of cleaning. It's so important to maintain those spaces. And so you can just see some of the stats here around some of the things. I mean, it was amazing to watch as 60 electrostatic sprayers became into use where we can instantly clean a room and a space um, in a matter of minutes. You know, hand sanitizers and temperature scanners deployed. Um, all kinds of things took place to make sure that we had safe and healthy environments. COVID testing is another layer that was added. Last fall, we were able to provide all of our staff with a COVID test when it was really still difficult to even get tested. We now offer bi-weekly testing on site um, to all of our staff as we protect ourselves and our community. You know, I'd encourage everybody in the community to get tested. This is one of the ways that we're helping control that asymptomatic spread and keep our community healthy and safe as we're all interconnected in this. You know, I began this presentation talking about partnership. I can't say a big enough thank you to our city and particularly to Chief Gerber for his partnership. He sat on our district incident command team and contributed his talents and knowledge and support to us as a school district throughout this year. You know, we had the opportunity to partner with the city and Hennepin County. And because of this relationship, you know, we've been able to, to uh, be vaccinating our first responders that support and care for our Southwest Metro uh, area community here since December 28th at Eden Prairie High School. It's just been an absolute honor to, to work together in that as we're all bound together as well. So let's talk EP Online for a moment. You know, although online learning is not new to us, we've made some really significant advancements and evolutions over this past year. EP Online was launched and became our largest elementary school almost overnight. In the past, we've offered supplemental courses, so this is not new to us. 
but we are now a full approved comprehensive online provider K-12. And you know what I'm most proud of is that we are not just an average run of the mill online provider. We are truly a model program that other districts are looking at. We're the only comprehensive program that offers that live synchronous learning every day for elementary students. That high quality learning and connection is because of the care of our staff um, and the care that they have to our students and commitment to high levels of learning for each student. You know, all this, although this program was launched um, with great speed during the pandemic, it truly will be an enduring choice for families, not only here in Eden Prairie, but for students and families across the state who wanna take advantage of an Eden Prairie education. You know, our students thrive academically through our whole child education. And this has been evident in our results and our outcomes. You know, while the state took a year off um, of measurement, we are so committed to making sure that our students are learning that we continued on so that we could serve each of our students effectively. You know, this is part of the care and commitment we have to learning. So even in the context of distance learning and shifts and in instructional models um, uh, and that, that intentional redesign, um, last spring, um, we went ahead and continued with our assessments and we saw that 78.5% of our, uh, our third grade students still demonstrated proficiency um, in our standardized assessments and local uh, measures. So just outstanding work by our students, our staff, and our community. In spite of the challenges, um, our graduation rates continued to rise last year because of the commitment to staff to ensure that students were able to demonstrate high levels of learning and proficiency against benchmarks. And this was not just one group of students and one moment in time. This has been a journey that we've been on and, and our commitment to each students. And so we've seen amazing results over the last four years and impacts on our graduation rates across our student groups because of that commitment to each student and ensuring that they're prepared, truly prepared for whatever is next after, after high school. You know, this trajectory is because of investments and commitment by our community. Because the community support, supported those small class sizes in our 2015 levy for our K-1 students, we've been able to have K-1 students in school five days a week for nearly the entire school year this year um, during the pandemic. You know, in um, subsequent years with the support of the board, we lowered class sizes in second, third, and fourth grade. This has provided us with some of the lowest class sizes in the entire metro area and really prepares our students to take advantage of the amazing opportunities available in middle school and high school. An example of that is at the high school, it's just our tremendous course catalog. And I started doing this last year. Um, you know, we continue to expand and revise, but what's most exciting to me is it's done based on connections with students, their voices and their interests. You know, we're always listening and we're working to adapt to meet the needs of each of our students. And so you can see some of the new courses that are now available for 2021-22, um, this upcoming school year. And you can see some of those recently added courses as well, many of them um, college level courses that our students have access to during their high school time. I'm gonna have Mr. Johnson here roll a little video while I speak And this video is of some of our construction work um, that is taking place over at CMS, thanks to the community support um, of the bond back in 2019. And uh, it's amazing to see what that work is looking like here. Um, this year. Um, oh, do you wanna turn the sound off and I'll just narrate here as we roll. There we go. So, there we go. Thank you. During this unprecedented year of COVID, you know, we've continued to march forward uh, and been able to, so that we can provide unmatched opportunities for our students. You know, we will keep moving forward during all this. So while construction has been taking place at the middle school, we've also been focused on the student experience that will take place. You know, we've revised our schedule in pretty significant ways, and it's gonna allow us to exponentially increase choice for our middle school students. You know, we're designing to be able to take advantage of the amazing facilities that our students, staff, and community will be able to have access to um, in this new building. 
And we've been examining continuity across all of our grade levels and programming. So in this video, you're seeing images of some of our new classroom spaces, uh, the, the new classroom wing where that's going up, our athletic complex, cafeteria space, and fine arts space. But this really is gonna be a lot more than just a building. It's going to be a space um, that connects. It, it's gonna allow students to explore and it's gonna provide a hub for the community as well. You know, we believe many of these spaces will be heavily used by the community outside of um, just the, the school hours. And we're really looking forward to providing tours as the space opens up this fall. You know, our sixth graders will join our seventh and eighth graders at CMS and our preschool students will be joining their neighborhood schools um, next year as well. And so you're seeing the outdoor track space that will get laid down um, this year from, from this former, this angle right now. We've got new gymnasium spaces that have gone up and uh, look amazing here as they're, they're coming together. You can see what that looks like as of December. I actually saw, I think the, the fine art space was up a few minutes ago and they were actually starting to put the big metal beams onto the, the roof of that this morning um, as I pulled in this morning. And so there's the, the new fine art space with that will have a full theater and then um, music classrooms and connecting through all the fine arts. There will also be a community um, space in that, that community will be able to check out and leverage um, as you think about potential meetings or connection points as well. And so this will be a great uh, contribution to our community as we go along as well. So I mentioned um, just a moment ago that our neighborhood preschool is coming um, this year as well. And so registration for preschool actually opens uh, here in March. I'd encourage all Eden Prairie families with young children to connect with community education and hear all about that. You know, our little eagles are amazing little members of our community and, the, and they're the future of our legacy of excellence here in Eden Prairie. You know, in going through Little Eagles, they'll be well prepared to take on their future as they enter Eden Prairie schools and take advantage of all the opportunities that are here as well. And those choices and opportunities are expanding. You know, through the Designing Pathways um, community vision around academic experience that was created in 2015 and 16, we are launching increased academic choice, increased career exploration, and increased career pathways that are authentic and connected to real world experience, audience, and purpose. Um, you know, we want every student to be prepared uh, to take advantage of their gifts and their talents and their interests. Um, while never closing a door. And so I appreciate our partnership with the chamber and I'm really excited about the doors that this might open for us as well, for our students and our businesses, our nonprofits and our community. You know, we'll be offering community presentations around designing pathways here as throughout the spring as we get ready to launch next year um, that will go in depth. But we're going, this will be a K-12 experience. So our K-5 students will um, engage in opportunities to explore some of those, their, their interests and talents through some choice programming at the elementary level that's developmentally appropriate and connects really to their learning there. Our sixth through eighth graders will get to do a lot more exploratory work around some career fields and be able to see where their interests and passions might connect. And then in 9-12, um, we're preparing to really have um, purposeful, authentic engagement that will could culminate for students in a capstone project where they're working authentically out in businesses in the community um, in ways that prepare them for whatever that next step is after high school for them. And so we're really excited about those increased choices that are coming for our students as they connect in authentic and, and real ways. So Rick probably will have a slide. We kind of joke about this. Um, but all of this for really a great value as well. You know, fiscal stewardship is important to us here in the district. It's one of the things that the board values as well. I'm really appreciative of the support from our community. And when we talk about taxes, we're really able to provide this experience for our students at one of the lowest cost taxpayers of any of our neighbors. And so I just wanna say thank you to our community and our taxpayers for your support. You know, our students should really make you proud. Um, and this investment that you've made really helps build a stronger community and future here in, uh, in Eden Prairie. 
you know, this has been a year of change. It's been a year of creativity and invention and intention. You know, our mission to inspire each student every day is a guiding light for us as we focus on our design. And although it's been challenging, I, I really believe that we'll be better in the future and that through care and partnership, our staff is really ready to take advantage of everything that we've learned uh, for the benefit of our students.